Everyone in an organization owns cybersecurity. Why? Because we're all potential targets. Just as the people who are engaged in protection are becoming better and better, uh, the same thing is happening for the people who want to penetrate uh, these defenses and take advantage of them. We're dealing with a changing set of bad actors, a changing set of risks. Board of directors don't always understand the depth and breadth of the security landscape. If an organization is not discussing cyber risk on an annual basis, they're, they're not performing due care. What new rules do we have to have in place? What new policies do we have to have in place? How do we prepare our employees, as well as our clients and our suppliers, for the introduction of this new technology? The threats that pose the greatest risk, uh, not only to our industry, but any, any important uh, vital player in. Uh, infrastructure or uh, important industries are other following. Malware, uh, which is you know which is bad software which gets injected from the outside. Whether it's destructive malware or different kinds of malware which are just interested in stealing information. You know, the destructive kind of malware is the kind which actually gets deposited unknowingly and then actually wipes out entire operating systems and causes chaos. The other kind of malware, which is more traditional, is what uh, comes in unobtrusively and then actually steals information without you knowing it, it takes away your credentials. But the way you have to address that is expect that it is going to happen. An administrative assistant, data entry clerk, the CEO, who is doing three things at once, multitasking. Someone interrupts them, they're on the phone, an email comes in, they inadvertently click on a link on an email that was very targeted to them and suddenly their system is compromised and maybe the network is compromised based upon what their access might be. Every employee is a potential target. Attackers can use employees in order to get to other employees or other systems. That's one of the reasons why we are all at risk and it takes vigilance on the part of every single employee within an organization to make it secure. Human errors are, gonna, are definitely going to happen. We will send emails to people who shouldn't get emails. People will lose their phone. People will lose their computer. Uh, we probably will have partners that share data that they shouldn't share. One of the big cybersecurity breaches for some company that was extremely secure uh, from the outside was created by um, an HR employee who actually downloaded a Facebook app on her machine. Which created a vulnerability within that one person's computer, which then affected the entire network and the entire system. So that's an example of how human error, lack of knowledge, lack of training, can create a cybersecurity risk for a company. This is what the intelligence community deems today as when you have extremely well-funded uh, organizations, nation states with a huge manpower and technology power behind them launching concerted attacks, which weaken the defenses of an organization. And once they do so, then they come in through the back door and install destructive malware uh, to take advantage of at a later date. Cybersecurity is not only an external issue, which I think we think about all the time, there also are lots of um, threats within the company as well, too. Unhappy employees who are actually um, behind the firewall, who are um, accessing data, and that's creating another big security risk within companies. You can have a very well-fortified perimeter, you can take care of your network, you can have great resilient infrastructure, but uh, somebody from inside the company exposes you and actually is the cause for either theft of information or fraud or losses, either inadvertently or deliberately. What policies do you have in place or what technologies do you have in place to be able to deal with those kind of events? And that goes all the way back to your hiring practices. What are you doing in terms of your vetting of employees? It goes back to your practices associated with who has access to this kind of information. Compromise of third-party systems, of course, is very important because there are a lot of third parties who actually connect with you. That's a big threat and a growing threat as well. If you're going out to use a third-party service, you know, what kind of supplier um, security and privacy commitments are you getting from um, that particular provider? 
what are they willing to sign up for, and is that data that you're sending to that service the appropriate data. You could be very well fortified, but if the machines of your customers and clients have got bad software on them or are not protected, that can actually flow through into your systems. You can outsource your operation, but you can't outsource your accountability for your customer information or the information that you're gathering on your uh, e-commerce transaction. You are ultimately accountable as the business owner of that information. Denial of service attacks, which uh, are increasingly being perpetrated all the time. This is where you have massive activity of people, uh, basically machines trying to access your systems and therefore they clog down and slow down the system to an extent where genuine customers can't get in anymore. And finally, compromising of the embedded systems themselves, which take a long time to get detected. Sophisticated targeted attacks on applications, planting of backdoors inside applications, which enable access by people who are not authorized to access those systems and applications from the outside. It's often years before you know that your system got compromised, maybe at the time when it was being developed itself. while there's been an increase in, in boards looking at governance as it relates to cybersecurity, there's still a lot that can be done and should be done associated with managing that type of risk. One of the questions, and I always like this one, is how do we know that we haven't been attacked or infected? What type of insurance and mechanisms do we have in place? And many times the honest answer is we don't. But here's how we might find out if we have. Do we have policies in place that basically say that every board meeting we're going to get a report as it relates back to our risk profile? And on that risk profile, what metrics are we using to be able to identify that risk profile? Do we have policies in place, both from an insurance standpoint as well as a legal standpoint? Do we have a team of people that are ready to be able to respond to this? Questions that I would be asking management would, would be, for example, you know, who do we have that's in charge of this internally? What's the structure? Do we have, for example, an information security officer, also often called a CISO? Who does he report to or she report to? Is that the uh, CIO? How does that flow up into the CEO? When the business need, the technology deployment, and the control environment becomes out of alignment, that's where risk really starts to get introduced. Anytime there's significant business change, an acquisition or a merger, or we're expanding our services or taking some big massive change, it's often a good time to say, what does this do to our control environment? So making sure that there's that structure and that there's regular assessments going on and that the board is getting reported to at least annually at a minimum on the state of security until the board has a certain amount of confidence that the business has been able to address the risks and put in the proper controls to, to prevent these types of incidents. In the event that there is a data breach, is our communications department prepared to respond to the media? What is our plan for actually reaching out to the clients, to our suppliers, you know, to the public at large or regulatory agencies? We don't have time to put together something when it happens. These things have to be prepared in advance and practiced. And ideally, have some type of independent verification that in fact attests that you're, you're doing things that will in fact meet industry norms and do in fact mitigate the risk to a level that's acceptable.